So I've started off with my eyebrows, um, my eyeshadow, so what am I doing? Uh, so I'm not going to go through that, it's just a really simple look. We're going to work on the skin today, which mine is not looking great at all. Now, I've gone in and I applied some oil this morning and I can still feel sort of part of it on my skin. So because my skin can often be very dry, um, it's a little bit more oily at the minute. I, f I don't know why, but I just feel like an oil works really, really well. I'm going to go into this separate primer, which is going to help to sort of illuminate my skin. Um, and this is the Smashbox Photo Finish Foundation Primer. Really, really enjoy this. It literally is just the most hydrating and glowy product that I think, you know, I've ever tried. Um, and I would definitely go out and repurchase this when this is all gone so for my foundation today i'm going to go in with the nars sheer glow foundation um also oh for years this used to bug the crap out of me because it literally used to stay like the lid used to stay like that but i've just fixed it wow amazing um so i'm going to go in the shade in with the shade valoris from here it is way too dark i literally just applied this and was like i can't I can't ca carry on with this. Um, so what I'm going to do is use that on sort of the outer perimeter and then go into the Maybelline Superstay foundation in the shade of True Ivory. Now this isn't too much of a glowy foundation and of course the look I'm going for today is glowy but because I'm using it on sort of the inner portion of my face I tend to find that it keeps me matte. I'm using an angled brush just to buff that in and sort of merge the two together. And I feel like these give me a really great sort of mix. Um, I am taking this down. I am taking that down my neck as well because um, I kind of underestimated actually how pale I was. So the whole look that I wanted to go for today was like a really glowy, dewy look um, without all of the product. I suppose it's quite a subjective interpretation actually of what too much makeup is so please take that statement really lightheartedly and take this and adopt it however you want to um, but I wanted but one thing that I noticed when watching these types of tutorials is that we're like yes we're going to go for that instant illumination and that really sort of dewy look and we pile on so much product and we're all guilty of it um, in a bid to try and replace the natural luminosity that we had and if you just sort of notice like when you turn like your skin has this really beautiful a luminous glow to it anyway so I want to try and minimize the product mainly for myself um, and hopefully just sort of take you guys on a journey through it as well so for concealer I'm going to go into the elf 16 hour camo concealer I love this so much it is my absolute favorite and I'm taking this just like that and I'm going to dot it slightly here because I feel like there is where I need it gets quite dark there and I don't know why I'm going to use a Nanshi concealer brush which is just my favorite brush for this and pull this out I learned a fantastic trick off Robert Walsh I think I know his name is um, so happy that his YouTube channel sort of like just completely blown up in terms of like subscribers because he's such a great you know he's such like a great I was going to use the word guru but that's not appropriate he is such a great teacher um, when it comes to makeup and actually sort of when you go through other people's makeup in the most like amicable and professional way and just give sort of hints and tips and the theory and science behind it he's just such an informative channel we're all guilty of these things but we get so tempted to take concealer and put it all the way underneath our eyes i used to do it all the time until um he taught this trick about if you place like two bits of concealer on the other side you literally use that and sort of saturate um those areas and I've noticed as well especially considering like I'm less tanned um, I get a lot of like blue underneath my eyes and more noticeably at the minute I, it's kind of a scary thing um, but I get them mostly here and here and I didn't realize that until I actually sat in front of a, a mirror without any Instagram videos or YouTube videos where you can be tempted to try these tricks and they're not quite appropriate for you. So now what I'm going to do is naturally bring a bit of chiseledness to my face. I'm going to go into a cream contour kit 
it's not a contouring kit, it's too warm. Um, this is from Aesthetica Cosmetics, kind of like a dupe for Anastasia, um, although their contour kits are quite old school now, aren't they? And I'm taking a really soft brush, it's quite a small brush so it's going to pack on a lot of colour as opposed to a bit more of a bigger brush. And I'm using this and just sort of stippling that warmth. But the reason I'm using cream contour is because it gives me that colour pigment whilst keeping everything nice and sort of dewy and illuminated. And I, it means then I don't have to sort of go in with lots of, lots of powder. So I'm taking this here, main portion here, and then as I get to my forehead I sort of tailor it off um, into the hairline. I'm not sure what use this does because it's not getting rid of my double chin but we're never going to do that unless I go to the gym. So I'm going to take my beauty blender which I haven't used for ages because I don't know why but I hate getting my beauty blenders dirty and wet. I absolutely hate it. I have no idea why. I think it's a hoarding thing to be quite honest but I thought I'm going to force myself to get it out today because they do make my skin look really really healthy and glowy so what i'm now going to do is set my face however because i went in with cream product which is not going to it hasn't changed the texture of my skin necessarily um it, what it does mean is that i don't have to go in with as much powder so all i'm going to do is sort of go back over with what i had done previously but this time i'm going to use a lot less product um, and for me, powder changes the texture of my skin really quickly. So I'm not going to use as much. So I'm just popping into my face powder, which is the Maybelline Super... You can't see that. What was the point? Uh, the Maybelline Superstay powder. And I'm taking that on my chin and around the moustache area. I'm going to take a bit on my forehead and then just drag this slightly here and just underneath my cheekbones and I'm not putting it all over my face you literally like just do not need to you just take it on the parts where you're going to get a bit oily but it looks like you're oily rather than dewy if that makes sense and for me it's literally in it's kind of in an anchor position ah oh, have I just found something then what I'm going to do is go into my bronzer which is the give me some by mac I need to get a brand new one because you know you need to get a new one when you can see the this pattern coming through and just push that into and around my cheek area i am going to go with blush today but i feel like this gives me a really like might be a subjective experience i don't know but it just gives me a really great base to start off with now for blush i'm going to take the sleek Blush by 3 palette in the shade of Lace. This is my favourite blush palette of all time. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but Sleek is such a nostalgic brand for me because this was my high end when I first started, started YouTube. Like, this is what I considered high end. Um, so yeah, we've come a long way. Take this sort of orangey peachy shade here. And sort of brush that. Onto the apples of my cheeks, and I'm gonna. I'm slightly tempted to take it a bit more high up because if it's sort of too down and you're sort of putting it here, it drags your face down, or it does for me anyway. And I like to carry that through into my bronzer, go into the pink, and I know this sounds a bit overkill, but we'll go back through it and take that just there. So once I've deposited that colour, I go back into my foundation brush because obviously this is way too pigmented and unnecessary. So I've already added a bit of brow highlight here, underneath my brow and then also in the inner corners of my eye as well because for me that helps that area to sort of stand out a bit more and it's where the light will sort of catch it. Now, that sounds like catch it. Uh, what I like to do, and again, I've just tried this myself, is I sit in, this makes me look incredibly orange. I want, I sat in front of a mirror, right in front of the window, um, and I'm also using my phone just as a bit of a demonstration. But I sat and I was like, 
where does the light hit my face? And I'm not kidding you, I sat there and I drew where it would hit my face if I was naturally in the sunlight. And that's what I want to replicate today. Instead of just putting like a swipe across my face, we're not gonna do that. But I'm not just gonna go in and do like the default, you know, factory settings of doing highlight because it's just not working. So I'm gonna take the MUA and Dress Your Skin Shimmer Highlighter in the shade of Radiant Cashmere. It looks way too dark. However, when you put it on, it adds a really beautiful overlay of shimmer without the color. And what makes that a bit better is the fact that I'm taking a stippling brush for this and in my beauty blender and just use the point just to sort of melt this into the skin because it can end up looking quite textured and then very finally and to be honest I don't really think this does much but I do like to go in because it just makes me feel like my whole routine is complete um, but I'm just going to go in with the collection primed and ready makeup fixing spray it doesn't do that oh, but it has a beautiful mist that makes me feel cleansed so I'm going to put my eyelashes on, I am going to go in and do my lips, um, if you are interested then I'm going to take uh, MAC Velvet Teddy, the MAC, what is this, Calm Heat and then I'm going to go in with um, a lip gloss. So I said I was going to put some natural lashes on, these are my version of natural. There you go, you can see them. Um, they are from Pinky Goat and they are the Ream lashes. They are really, really good. Um, I Just before I wanted to finish off this whole look, um, I'm gonna take my lip gloss, but I wanna show you how I do it because again, I think this was a tip that I learned from, how can I forget his name? Oh my God, Body Bling, Tati, JLo, that big artist, I can't think, oh god this is so embarrassing, uh, but anyway, um, he was doing Tati's makeup and I thought one one of the tricks that I thought was really great is that we can, not that I'm ever like constantly on lip gloss, but I'm currently like, it's a vibe right now, um, he said to actually take it and bring it up towards like the edge of the lips, so if I was just to put it on like this, it looks great, but then if you just take a smidge Can you see that? I can't see that. I hope you can see it. Uh, and actually fill it in right to the edge of the lip. And I'm probably just preaching to the choir here, to be quite honest. Um, but it was something that I never did before, but actually it brings a lot of luminosity to the lips and it also makes them look a little bit bigger as well. So this is the finished... Why do my teeth look really glossy? This is the finished look of dewy skin and a very big ear that wants to creep out. Anyway, so thank you so much for watching this video today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I think my sole purpose was to kind of focus on dewy skin, something that I really like doing at the minute and just making everything look all healthy and glowy and not like caking on so much product to the point where you have to replace any of the illuminosity and dew that you would naturally had anyway. I just wanted to work on what we currently had. But I hope you enjoyed this video today and I hope it was useful in some sort of way, shape or form. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you again in my next video. Bye.